You are watching Co-op for Two. I'm Jesse. And I'm Greg. And this is our review and discussion of Dead Men Tell No Tales. And before we get into it, I should mention, we've got a full playthrough. Mm -hmm. And Greg did a quick and dirty rules overview mm -hmm. that you can watch. And this is Greg's game. You brought it to us. Yeah. Tell us, can you tell us a little bit about the game and what your expectations were coming yeah. in? Um, there was some good buzz about this game. Uh, and we're always looking for co-ops. Good co-ops to play, obviously. And uh, I think we did our co-op con. Uh, one of our co-op cons, which we'll have a little video about at some point discussing yeah. that. And uh, I just wanted to kind of have, it was nice, it was, it's always nice to have something new and shiny, you know? Like, and how can you look at that yeah. box and not want to play that game? Well, that's a great lead in, Jesse. Very good segue. Uh, the look of this game is, uh, I think, very, very cool, the theme and everything. So let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. In the game, you're, you've had the shootout with this uh, Skeleton Revenge, which is the name of the ship, which is crawling with skeleton warriors and uh, skeletal guards and things. Mm -hmm. And you've got to get on there and steal their treasure. And uh, it's burning, so you have to deal with the sure fire. Is. And then sure you have to deal is with the uh, yeah the skeleton warriors on the ship, and just you know that's a pretty cool you know I mean I think just in general I mean it's funny like Disney's like aren't pirates fun but pirates are like these awful horrible people that are murdering and stealing mm -hmm. from everybody, mm -hmm. not very Disney right but um you know I think the swashbuckling aspect of it is always calls to people mm -hmm. in this kind of a theme while pretty prevalent within gaming world. I think it's nice that they do a little twist on this uh, because of the fact that you're really dealing, a lot of it is the fire. And the other thing, no, uh, God, just a quick point, mm -hmm. like the with these uh, piratey games, they tend to be like heavy narrative and, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a real strategic, I mean, mm -hmm. it's designed to be a proper mm -hmm. strategic co-op. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I mean, the story is, we just told you the story. There's yeah. no more story. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, so before we get too much more into this specific game, uh -huh. uh, uh, Jesse was good enough to um, take a look at what else this uh, designer has done. Uh, it's Kane Klenko. Uh -huh. So I want to build up a good a little goodwill towards Kane. <laughs> might be uh, mm -hmm. being a little negative towards him. Um, so uh, Jesse, you want to tell us a couple of games? Yeah, that he did Fuse. Can I point which... you there? Yeah. Yeah, Fuse, this is the goodwill part. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, Fuse was uh, one of the greatest ex gaming experiences I've had. I probably top 20. Really? I didn't was know. To play, you had yeah, that because I, one day. Uh, it's real time. It's a real time yeah, game. My, which you're not keen on. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife and my twin and I, we just we played like it was one of those 10 minute games. It was like, play it. Oh, let's go again. Let's go again. And we must have played 50 games of this thing one night. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, that's probably it's an exaggeration, but mm -hmm. I mean, it was a lot of game, games. So I, I love that game so much. You that's, know? And I played it with you once. You mm -hmm. taught me and I didn't love it. I, I don't tend to love the real time mm -hmm. games, so, but it was well, okay. But, but yeah. And then he did Flatline, which but, is derived but, from Fuse. Have you played yeah, that? I've not played it. I'm looking forward to doing so. So uh -huh. I'm, uh, we should get that to the table. And he did a couple other things, but one thing that stood out was Pandemic mm -hmm. Rapid Response. Which is another real time. Real time yeah. pandemic game, which we haven't played, but I've looked at it and I was like, mm, no, no, not, not for, for you. Me. I, didn't, I mean, I'm, you said, I'm willing to like, try. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think he did really well with that, that aspect of the fuse, but is it because it's a quick game or is it yeah, better? You yeah. know, so I'm interested but in trying flatline. lines. Lots of co-ops. He's a co-op guy. Yeah, it does seem that way. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, so I want to talk about a little bit about the art. I mean, well, well, that's a, our next. Yeah, that's good. what okay. I was gonna say. Because so we got a slight disagreement there. I mean, mm -hmm. we both agree. Like that, box, that yeah, box cover is like one of the best yeah, box I mean, covers there are. You're seeing that this makes in you want to yeah, Absolutely, you're you're yeah. gonna gravitate toward this. Mm -hmm. But once oh, we, oh, oh, we oh, yeah. and also yeah. this to me like is great advertising, right? It's not like there's a Euro game in here, which I love. Euro games, mm -hmm. love them. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, that's if you buy this, you're gonna. This is the kind of game you want to play. You know, you're looking for this. This is your audience. Yeah, but but that is the it is much more of a Euro game. I mean, is more of a no. But I just mean like I, I and we can talk about this about uh -huh. what kind of gamers will like this game. Uh -huh. But I think you know this. But is, you think don't you think the person who might buy that might expect like a little swashbuckling in? story? Mm. No, I think I um, I don't know. Well, you think I guess they'd that's... expect to get this with these little thing? I don't know, maybe. Uh, yeah. But the box works. Yeah, it <laughs> definitely works. works. Yeah. So and the art on the tiles. To me, uh, it's quite evocative. There's fire and there's mm -hmm. water, which looks really cool. I love the high contrast colors. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like this. You know, this looks uh, looks fantastic mm -hmm. to me. You know, yeah, and I like. Characters. I think the characters look pretty cool. Um, I like that art. I think it mm -hmm. looks good. I mean, uh, 
yeah, and I mean, just the components and stuff, they got the blood on here and this kind of thing. You know, they didn't need to give you this whole wide thing, but I like the little notch for your character card. It doesn't matter, really. Well, this really, is but very it's a nice. nice. Little this, touch. this little thing is And nice. this, you got your character on here, he slides along this board. Mm -hmm. These items look these good. These are beautiful. The color this art here is beautiful. Yeah, I don't I, love the art on the character and cards. These, which, by the way, you have all my action. This is from our <laughs> game we just played, so we're a little bit fried. Mm -hmm. But I like this too. We, you know, we discussed this when we played Flashpoint mm -hmm. and some others. Yeah, but it's just a nice, easy way to yeah. keep track this of like I've used and these. And they're and they're and they're 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 okay. They're I don't love this. Mm -hmm. I don't love the board. It feels like it. If you watch our playthrough, you'll notice many times mm -hmm. we miss oh, yeah. whether there's a doorway or not. Like I do not love uh, the messy readable. Yeah, one of us missed. That's right, not me. <laughs> Notice you said that, and it was like you sort of tried to trick them into thinking it was me. Yeah, it was definitely you. didn't you. technically lie. Yeah. You like well, maybe one that's, of us Maybe the viewers can decide uh, on that. But I and I so it's messy. It's mm -hmm. hard to read. The fire, like it, yeah, it's kind of cool. I mean, it is cool. The the mm -hmm. art is cool, but mm -hmm. it's it's it starts to drift into where you're paying a price for readability. Yeah, I mean, mostly you can see where to go. I think just this is one area where when we played, it was tar it was a little harder to see for one of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, but mostly I think, you know, it does give you an evocative feel. All of it. I think all the art together yeah, and the components yeah, together. I mean, and it's got and, a style. It's yeah, got a style. For sure. And it's, it's aside from the deck hands, mm -hmm. which, I mean, it's a fine component. I mean, it's nice mm -hmm. that they painted them and everything, mm -hmm. but they're a little incongruent. Like, it's like... This That's is for these, true, and yeah. then this is for the other guys here. You know, yeah, this is the, yeah. you know, this is the, the skeleton warriors look like this and this, which they look great oh, too. Oh yeah, like, but but, but they're, they're you, totally different. Like than, you have to, like it's a little. They don't have personalities. They're just I think they generic. look great personally. Yeah. But I think all aside from the deck hands, mm -hmm. all of it looks like it belongs to the same game. Yeah, right. I agree with that. And I like the fact that just. You know, they brought in, like, they're like, well, the cutlasses, look, that's a cutlass. That's a that's a uh -huh. pirate item. Mm -hmm. um, and the doubloons, you know, this game didn't need, you know, you have piles of treasure, but I like the fact that they have the doublooms as your action yeah, thing. Because it's just uh -huh. a nice way to say, well, yeah. look, the blo gold doublooms is a big thing in Pirate mm -hmm. World, and that's how we're going to work that into the game. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, the art's, yeah. And, you know, this is stabbed into the, t you know, just those yeah, little things. Are, I like. these yeah, are. I think uh, just mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. So... But now we're going to get into a little bit about the um, uh, uh, ease of play mm -hmm. and the iconography and et cetera. Mm -hmm. And just, just the ease of play, right? So yeah. um, we're going to, this is kind of a, uh, the meat of probably our discussion, yeah. the ease of play. Do you want it's to kick us off we, here, Jesse? It's where we have the most trouble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, the, there are, if you watch our playthrough, you'll see. Mm -hmm. It is, like, it requires us to be at the top of our bandwidth is That's the term the we used to use yeah. Yeah. to keep to keep from making mistakes yeah. and getting the stages maybe at the top level that's where we should start the phases of the game mm -hmm. are very unintuitive because normally we're used to like players take their action and then there's a game goes mm -hmm. its thing right like in pandemic just, players take yeah. its turn and then you reveal mm -hmm. and do some infection in this game there's a very yeah. odd thing where first you have to take a tile then you have to remember to put a token on the mm -hmm. tile with the and do the die. Mm -hmm. Then you take your turn and then you do this left. And, and there's, a, and there's so... an effect here and, and a, oftentimes an effect on the bottom. Yeah, boy, so, is it easy to miss a step. And so I think that's really one of the bigger problems that we had with the game, which was uh, inelegance. Mm -hmm. I like an elegant design where it's like, you know, you're rolling dice, it's like, oh, you know, if you're in a dice, kind of a dice game, right, where you're you're doing lots of things with the dice, and you're like, well, sixes are always successes. Mm -hmm. That's elegant, across the board. Mm -hmm. Like, so in this game, it's sort of, um, there's a real inelegance to it. So, most of our bandwidth, and now when we played this game, we've, this to be fair, we've only played this game three times. Uh -huh. But, you know, I mean, each of those, the last one was maybe the shortest play, the other two were like three or four mm -hmm. hours. Which yeah. we, we really take our time with games. Yeah. And so... We actually made like two, we forgot to put something out mm -hmm. during the game and we forgot the barrels. Now part of it is that like, you know, just we're a little more newer to filming and I think part of me was kind of pay attention to that and that was mm -hmm. just too much, there was like one uh -huh. more step. Uh -huh. And so most of the game I felt like it's draining and I'm remember having to remember all the various oddball rules mm -hmm. while you're playing and I'm spending less time to but, think but, actually playing the game. Right. Well, so just to jump the in for keeping. a second and make a comment mm -hmm. about that. This is a good example of where the designer fell down because on one hand, it's this the weirdness mm -hmm. of the rules, right? You could forgive that if 
they made an effort, but look at this. Here are the two, yeah. here are the two player aids. Where are the steps? Draw a tile, mm -hmm. put it out, take your turn, draw yeah. a thing. Doesn't exist. Okay, well, there this are is... lots of things mm -hmm. in this game, lots of little rules that are missing, mm -hmm. that aren't, that are hidden in the rule book in different places. Yeah. It is not, so, like this missed, mm -hmm. this needed an editor to come down and say, well, if you're gonna give a player aid, Tell them the three phases of each turn. That's just 101 game yeah. design. Well, I think the greater problem is, is that like I don't want to have to look at that every time to go down the list, right? Well, sure, that right. too. But what this? I'm just going to give an example of like. Mm -hmm. So I mean, the tile comes out right at the beginning of your turn. You have to find a spot to put it, make mm -hmm. a choice, which is cool to figure out how you're going to build the ship. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is like you got to remember to put the die on, but then you got to pull a token from the bag and put it on, and then each of the tokens says a different thing, but. That's just like before you even start your turn, and that's mm -hmm. not even the end phases, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, there's a lot of weird rules, like just a yeah, lot of really weird rules. So, and so one thing is that these deck hands, if there's one, two, or three, it, that changes what happens. If there's one, it doesn't matter. If there's two, uh, you can't pick things up. Yeah. If there's three, you can't move. You have to kill them to leave there the room. There are lots. It's not on this. Not on this. Okay, yeah. but that's just one thing. Then there's yeah. also like if you're in a room and the fire goes up, you have to you have to raise your mm -hmm. fatigue. If you move from a two, like, so if I'm going to move... Then, can yeah. I just jump in? Mm -hmm. It's not just that there are lots of these weird idiosyncratic rules that are mm -hmm. scattered all over, not here, but it's that each of the rules like changes the way you normally do it. Mm -hmm. So you normally move this way. But mm -hmm. if there's this guy, then you can't move yeah. or you can't do this. And it's right. So they all interact, all these little rules. Right. So like if I want to move from this tile to this tile, like the fire is more extreme, which is a cool thing, right? Mm -hmm. But I take an exhaustion. So I raise my exhaustion mm -hmm. and then I say I moved one, right? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, maybe I move from here to here and I run. So I only use one, but I mm -hmm. get an extra two for running. And then I'm like, okay, well, that didn't take any exhaustion. But mm -hmm. when I did that, now I entered a room. Like if I entered a room. And then you're like, oh. Was I even allowed to do yeah, that? Because look this my... little thing, and then this is another example of like, mm -hmm. when it's here, is it that you can't go three or higher, mm -hmm. or is this? But that's this... another rule that you'd have to look up and clarify, yeah. right? So there's like, and then you're like, oh, well, wait, maybe I couldn't do that because there's three of these things out. And then you're not thinking like, well, at the end of it, should I eliminate deck hands? Because at the end of turn, maybe deck hands will come out. You're not thinking it. You're thinking like, wait, did I take my fatigue are, for this? That's and this? a very good point. You're so, Tons. so much of your energy is spent on doing legal things mm -hmm. legally. That there's not that much energy left over in sure. your brain to figure out strategy. And, and in that last game, mm -hmm. we were like, I can't, I can't figure it out. Let's just take our turn. Yeah, and that's not fun. It's fun to like to get to that last one of those last turns and think like, all right, what could we do to win this game? Mm -hmm. And you're really just like, I, I felt like I'm like, let's just whatever because yeah. it's too much. I'm gonna give you another. Which I want to. I don't want to like get you no, know mired down the, on this, this part. This is the meat of our... But, but I do want to mention another yeah. very good example. Okay, there's a guard and there's a skeleton, mm -hmm. okay? And then there's these deckhands. Now we discussed mm -hmm. kind of the deckhands, so mm -hmm. that's another thing. Mm -hmm. But when you fight the these, mm -hmm. you go into a space with them mm -hmm. and you automatically initiate a, mm -hmm. a fight. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't cost an action. That's not a big deal, but mm -hmm. it's just another rule to yeah, remember. Okay. Now thing. when you go in there, you fight them and you fight them in the same way. Ex but but if you lose, lose the fight yeah, it's a different behavior it's, it's a totally different behavior this yeah. one is on the card the other one's on the bottom of the card fine it's there but they're just completely different That's behaviors yeah. but then also you're not allowed to be so if you were to raise your fatigue after a battle you're allowed to stay in the room that you normally wouldn't be able to retreat from because your blood is up mm -hmm. just another and then rule, there's that weird right? thing if it explodes while you're in it which we didn't even realize yeah. till the end of the game that you're supposed to take to some extra fatigue, fatigue. yeah so just there's just weird this game little is like tiny. so that, that, much that seem unnecessary like does he really need that extra little rule about if you're in a room? Mm -hmm. I mean, thematically, it's, it, makes it makes some sense. sense, but boy, there's a lot of little fiddly rules. Yeah, I mean, thematically, I do like that the fire is going up. I do like that mm -hmm. you're fighting these skeletons. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the visual of like, mm -hmm. you're like, you're, you got your cutlass or your rapier and you're like, mm -hmm. you know, you're on the, in the rigging and you're fighting and stuff and you're like trying to grab the treasure and run out. And then that's another thing. If you, if you, you can, Carry treasure off the ship, mm -hmm. okay? That's how you win, by taking this treasure mm -hmm. and bringing it off the ship, right? Mm -hmm. Now, when you're carrying treasure, every time you enter a room, you take the full mm -hmm. fatigue instead of the right. difference Another of fatigue. Another change of the normal rules. It's thematically cool. Like, you're carrying it cool. this, it's heavy. It makes yeah, some sense. Yeah, you're getting more tired, and also there's a penalty for doing so. Yeah. But it's just more to remember and more to keep track of, right? Yeah. So, but... 
can we? Uh, do you have? Because I want to phase into the into the um, meaningful choices here. Unless yeah. Wanna... Well, I do want to make one more point. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we're in pretty much agreement. Mm -hmm. There's another thing that happens in this game that mm -hmm. we have talked about a lot in reference to another game mm -hmm. that we've played a lot of that we kind of have a love hate relationship with, which is Arkham, the uh, living yeah, card yeah. game. Yeah. And one of the things we talk about is feeling constricted. So it's not just the decisions you make, but do you feel like you're working and it's laborious and mm -hmm. not having a good time? Mm -hmm. And in this game, you're dealing with this fatigue. It's a very cool, clever mechanism, but mm -hmm. you're walking around the board like, oh, I can't pick that up. I can't even walk. I can't enter that room until I sleep and rest and drop this. Mm -hmm. It's kind of feels oppressive. Like it's a little bit tiring to play this game, be partly because you're not having fun. You're like, I can barely walk. Well, I'm going to disagree with you on that okay. because I do think it's a cool, it's like you're on this burning ship, mm -hmm. there's skeleton warriors around, and you're mm -hmm. trying to grab this treasure, mm -hmm. and it should feel, like, not oppressive, mm -hmm. but it should feel daunting. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is I'm not daunted by, like, I'm not like, ha-ha, like, I'm daunted because there's, like, mm -hmm. fire, and I'm daunted because I'm like, oh my god, what was the rule for this? Uh, what is the thing? And I mean, I really learned the rules, I thought, fairly well, yeah. you know, because we did the whole thing, and like, and I'm still, like... I'm not, and that's the thing about, to me, it's like, we are making meaningful choices in the mm -hmm. game. We're moving around and stuff and we're mm -hmm. thinking like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Because I want to, this is how I think we can best win. Mm -hmm. But one of the other major problems for me is that, you know, you're lowering this fire. Mm -hmm. And and the thing is, is that like, if you lower these all to it's like... It's not always good. It's Now you want to keep them different because if a one comes out, now mm -hmm. and like say a game like we our common reference point is Pandemic, mm -hmm. you would always get rid of the it's disease. Always good. always good to get it's the disease. It's always a benefit. Sure. And this game, your whole turn could be, if you turned all these down mm -hmm. to a one, like if you were, this mm -hmm. character can lower fire in all the adjacent mm -hmm. rooms. Mm -hmm. So if you were to use that character and lower all of them down to like a one. Which you think you've done a good thing. This card just come out uh -huh. and it could be one and it, all these would just go up to two. And you wish you hadn't and done. And you wish you hadn't done yeah. anything. You just wish you just didn't even take a turn. Yeah, that is a painful part about this. And thing. so the thing is, is that like, it's, it is a very interesting concept. The idea that like everything's trying to reach a disparity. So all the ones go to twos. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you draw the ones. And then if you draw two, then they all go to three. So it's mm -hmm. kind of always rising. So you want to keep things different, but you also need to lower things yeah. in general. I mean, it to is. It. In one, that's one of the interesting parts of this game mm -hmm. to wrap your head around this idea mm -hmm. that you don't just want to lower everything to set the yeah. same number. It does make it, that, that is interesting. Yeah. I can't tell how much is like we're just not good at it. Like there is some aspect of like I feel like maybe if mm -hmm. we figured out if we grokked it a little bit better, we would mm -hmm. do better. We've lost all well, of the times we played. Well, the th the thing, no, I, I we are disagreeing with that because I I kind of think well we got very close two times. I know we very yes, close two yes. times. Okay, mm -hmm. but I do think that like you know. Anything it takes so much to move across the board. You're gaining exhaustion, yeah, really and you're does. using your actions to do that. And then there's really all these other does. things you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And so, like half at the end of the, like sometimes of the game, you just say, "Well, you know what? There's I'm never going to get to this tile. I'm never going to get over yeah, it, yeah. right?" And so you're just going to let. And and, 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 and in, in some of the games that we mm -hmm. uh, that we're more effective in spots of them, we we would lower them a bunch and mm -hmm. then leave, right. and then we would uh -huh. know they would be mm -hmm. gathering back yeah, up, but that's yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you had mentioned Arkham Horror before, mm -hmm. which, Arkham again, LCG. The LCG, uh -huh. which we have sort of a love-hate with. Uh -huh. I mean, well, there's so much we love about it, but there's, like, things that we don't... Mm -hmm. Just as our... The nature of gamer that we are, mm -hmm. you know, which we share many uh, commonalities, obviously. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, generally, in a game like uh, like Pandemic, you have randomness in in the in the in the infection deck and randomness in the card you draw mm -hmm. in flashpoint you roll those dice for the fire that's one area randomness mm -hmm. and then whether the people are people or not mm -hmm. is another area. so generally mm -hmm. we tend to like you need to have some sort of randomness mm -hmm. otherwise otherwise it's a chess thing you can uh -huh. figure it out puzzle but you do like to have as little as possible so you have more control yeah this game has this yeah. It's completely random. Uh -huh. The bottom thing is completely random. Uh -huh. The tile that comes out is completely random. The token that goes on it is completely uh -huh. random. And the beginning of the game, you roll the dice are completely random, mm -hmm. right? And then, uh, yeah. And then when you fight, you're fight completely him. random. Uh -huh. The guys that are random. What so, tokens come out, where the treasures are. I mean, there's sure. just a massive amount of randomness. Yeah, I mean, I do hear you, and I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I would only say that, you know, it's not... 
It's the, 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 ra other than these cards, the randomness, like in fighting, I think is reasonable. It's one of these cases where if you really, if you want to beat the guy, the randomness in the battle dice is pretty small and you can pretty much set yourself up so you know you're probably mm -hmm. going to win. But I will say this, comparing again to Pandemic, one of the things that hurts the most about that deck, which makes it so unsatisfying, is that, first of all, as you point out, the, these bottom things can be totally devastating in mm -hmm. certain cases. And one of the things we lo both love in mm -hmm. Pandemic is you've got some intuition about the probabilities mm -hmm. in that deck. You know that if these cities have come out, they're not going to come out now until you get an epidemic, and then you know they're probably going to come out. In this game, it feels like we have no idea what's coming out. We have no idea what not, number is going to come yeah. out, whether a trapdoor is going to come out, which makes it, it's not fun. Like without, it means we just, we just say, well, anything could happen. On any turn, anything could hit yeah. us. So about a quarter of these cards are fives, which means that like a quarter of the cards reset the whole deck. So you just have no, like yeah. completely no idea. We took characters uh, twice, last game, the first second game we played, we picked these two characters because I like the scrying ability and I thought mm -hmm. you could uh, you could prepare and say, okay, well, the ones that are going to come out, let's just change them down. Mm -hmm. The first game, we had a lot more success with that when we tried that. And then the one that we played, that we filmed, we didn't have very much success because like it just, the board had gotten too large and, uh, and it was an evil choice every time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, I guess that is a big question. There is, maybe there is some mastery or something that we're not seeing in this game, mm -hmm. but... Uh, I just feel like, you know, there's quite a bit of randomness. Yeah. And there's a lot of bookkeeping, which is kind of slowing you down. Yeah. I kind of feel like I have a sense that this is a kind of game where you would play it a number of times, like just hoping for that. To, like you're playing at your best mm -hmm. and you're just waiting for a favorable condition. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is, again, just intuition that we're talking here for this, a second. A, but yeah, I, have a fe I have a feeling... If, if I had to guess, I would guess that you could get a lot better at this game. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not that we're playing it optimally and getting unlucky. But it's so much work and effort and fiddliness to play this game. I mm. don't want to play it enough that I would get really good at it. Mm. But I could see, like, we got killed with deck hands and Yeah, I don't think in, the, in our better. playthrough, I don't think we played optimally. Yeah. But I think the problem, a lot of the problem is, is that it's just... It's exhausting, it to, play exhausting to, to play to just it's exhaust everything. it is really it exhausting really is, to play. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to say one more thing about gameplay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um there's a real spatial layout element to this game, mm -hmm. and I don't feel like we did that great a job, but it's not an element, it's not a mechanic I enjoy in games. Mm -hmm. And some people are better at that. But I do feel like there is a like this game could hit a sweet spot for you. Mm -hmm. There is a it's kind of cool that you're laying out the ship and if you strategically did a good job, mm. it's a little easier to get to places and defend them. Mm. And well, maybe we don't pay enough attention to that. Well, do you think? I, I was thinking that like if you had, well, I think you just have such a limited amount of actions and there's so much to do, mm -hmm. but it's almost overwhelming in the sense that like, you know, if something's over here, I mean, you're just never going to go yeah, over there because yeah. you have to do all these other things to try to build your guy up. I mean, the exhaustion is just, Building and building and building. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kind of wonder, like, I was thinking, I wonder if, like, this is a game that's better suited for four players. But really? to me... The I, well, chaos, no, though. That's the thing. So yeah. I thought, like, well, if you had somebody that was, like, committed to just killing the deckhands and stuff, and then somebody... Yeah. But I feel like whatever you did by the time it got back around to you, forget it. Mm -hmm. Never gonna happen. Yeah. This game does, however, feature something that I really do like, which is that, like... You can choose uh -huh, yeah. to not take your whole turn and just shove your yeah, your actions to the next player, cool which is kind of cool. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I mean, it's just you know, I guess to me, uh, no, we should say, you know, do you want to tell about this uh, about our memorable moment in the game? So this is kind of a good. I do right. So so when we talk about this game and we kind of come out of it mm -hmm. pretty negative, both of us, I think, the one thing I remember though is that when we played this game, we played it at our co-op con weekend, mm -hmm. and we played it at the end of a long night, and we got to the last couple moves we had. We were gonna die. I think we were or like- we were gonna win. No, I think that we were actually about, I think ultimately we were maybe like six or eight to a Really, that yeah. long? Yeah, okay, because it was a pivotal moment. It was moment near the end of the game. Maybe six moves. And six um, moves. we ground to a halt over a disagreement mm -hmm. over what our strategy should be. Mm -hmm. 
and we probably spent a half an hour <laughs> yeah, talking like about. Hour. We usually, I mean, we'll, we take more yeah, time take than anyone usually. To, but this to was a case games. where we were like, I, I was like, I think we should go this way and get the treasure out. And Greg was like, I want to go this way. And we, it stopped, which mm -hmm. is what we do. And we discussed it, but we really were yeah. disagreeing about the strategy. And the only thing, we, the, you know, a little spoiler, we lost that game. We picked a strategy in the end eventually. We mm -hmm. tried it, we lost. Then we sort of said, well, what if we had done this differently? And we all still lost. So, but my point, just to wrap yeah, up, yeah. my point was though, that that's the mark of a pretty, that's a pretty, that's a mark in its favor that that it caused us to stop and really have disagreement about what to do. That's a yeah. that's a good thing. That's impressive. Yeah, that's I want that was all I was going to weigh yeah. in on that story is that like I was going to kind of interject and you basically just said it uh, no no no, I mean you said it well. I it just I think um you know I any I mean that's choices it. are the heart of any game. Yeah. I mean the the way a game is interesting is your the choices or do you have interesting yes. choices? Yes. I mean, obviously did you have fun at, is an, is a mm -hmm. huge part of it, right? But I mean mm -hmm. like making an interesting choice and like the fact that we were able to sit there for like an hour and just say this is the way to go, we should do this mm -hmm. uh, and you said no, we should go this way mm -hmm. was a great mark in the game's that's, column. Right? That's a mark of an interesting choice. Yeah. That was absolutely an interesting now, choice we had there. Now what we had done, I remember specifically when we were done and we had a big discussion about that. Mm -hmm. I think actually we sort of rewound it and I did we play we did. out the I end? I think we rewound it and tried We it took a, a picture way. of the board. That's what we did. Uh -huh. And we tried it the other way. Uh-huh, that's okay. right. So I feel like when when we had finished playing that la that other time, I thought to myself, I'm like, you know, and we discussed this and I said, you know, I said I could play this. 10 more times mm -hmm. or never again. Mm -hmm. I said, if you wanted to keep playing this, it was a game you loved, I would play mm -hmm. it again. Today we played it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it was the extra bandwidth of the mm -hmm. of filming or whatever. But to me, I just felt like I'm like, you know, is it worth all of the bookkeeping and all the extraneous rules yeah. and just all the extra headache? And yeah. the answer ultimately for me is not, not really. Yeah. And the two... Uh, you know, the two real words I think that sum up this game for me, unfortunately, mm -hmm. is just overwrought and inelegant. Yeah, it I, is inelegant. You know, if, if I were, now, if like I were a game company and mm -hmm. someone brought this to me mm -hmm. and they said, play it, okay, I would say, okay, you have a great design here mm -hmm. with a lot of really interesting things because, you know, we talk about originality quite a bit, mm -hmm. right, in gaming. And honestly, this is a really cool yeah, thing. Yeah, it is pretty clever. Like you mechanic. move from from room to room. It's mm -hmm. exhaustion you're taking. It's I don't you don't and see that's that. It's a pretty it. clever idea to use these dice to be. Yeah. They're grow, going up and yeah, and you and you lower. Down. There's a, there's an interesting aspect of you lower the fire in certain rooms mm -hmm. so that maybe your teammate can go through a mm -hmm. clear path. Mm -hmm. Now that's just with this particular character. Mm -hmm. I think is much. I, yeah. I don't know if I'd ever want to not play with mm -hmm. really with that specific So what character. would you tell the designer comes to you you say yeah, you got some great ideas. Yeah, I would say it's great ideas. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I uh, thanks for keeping me on track. Mm -hmm. So I would say like, you know, I would say look, you got a lot of interesting ideas. That's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. The idea of the dice on the ship and mm -hmm. everything. I mean, you have the powder kegs, mm -hmm. you've got the doubloons, you've got the mm -hmm. you know, you really captured that lore mm -hmm. and you've got a great theme, mm -hmm. but there's just too many odd yeah, rules and there's too much to remember. Simplify now, the rules. I'm going to tell you this, mm -hmm. if you were to play this game, mm -hmm. Now a lot of gamers in this in in, in our cult, gaming culture now, mm -hmm. you'll play a game once or twice, yeah. and like you may never play it again. Now, it's there not are people. the game for that. Well, but I was just gonna say, if you played this once, and mm -hmm. then six months later you're gonna play it again, forget it. All the rules will be gone. You'll for, you won't. You, remember you will have anything. to look. You will have to spend another hour on the rule book. You will never yeah. remember it because there's just too many weird rules. Yeah. You know, and I feel like if you play, I mean, I did a rules thing on it. You know, mm -hmm. so I feel like I should remember it. But uh -huh. no, forget it. In six months, I'm not. And this is a, there's some real complexity to wrap your head mm -hmm. around this. If you tried to teach, the, if you knew how to play and you tried to teach it to your friend who had never played before, they're not going to have a great time trying to, rem they won't be able to remember yeah. the rules. And You'll have to explain yeah. everything to them. Every move they make, they'll have to, they won't know how to do it or where they can go. Or and what it's they a can longer do. game. I mean, it's a, it's, and a it's a long game. So let me ask you this. Do you mm -hmm. think that this is a game that will reward you for being like, I'm going to get really good at this game. I'm going to remember all the oddball rules and it's going to have legs to for me to enjoy this over and over and over again. You couldn't do it by yourself. You'd have to do it with, with the people who were going to play with you would also have <laughs> yeah. to be with you getting better at it. But I do think that if you played this enough, mm -hmm. you could probably develop some good strategies and have some better intuition about where you should spend your time and how you should build a ship. But 
boy, it's a lot of work and it just does not, it's too, mm. for what it is and the length of the game, which you often point out, mm -hmm. it does not feel worth the, the now, time. One thing that's kind of interesting to me is that they have an expansion for this. Yes, they do. Which, what does an expansion usually the do? The Kraken. Oh, I thought you were going to ask me, what is it called? Oh, yes. What's it called, Jesse? It's called the Kraken. It's yeah. got little sea monsters. Which is awesome. Which and is great. what does it usually do? It usually mm -hmm. adds rules and makes adds it more complicity. complicated. Yeah. yeah. So to hard me, to, like, I mean, I, I can't to that. even imagine. I cannot even imagine. Yeah. And I feel like this is, you know, like, this is not going to... You know, there was an exciting moment, you know, where the ship is was exploding behind us and we're like trying we to lug. We almost got out. Yeah, in fairness, we almost. We're lugging the last bit of treasure. The ship is exploding. We're like making a break for it. And, and it is kind of cool. But I don't think this is the game where like if you had a group of people, you know, that you're going to get those memorable stories where like it's going to be like, oh, yeah, do you know all the times we played Dead and Winter? I don't, I just don't feel yeah, it's going to, yeah. it's going to generate that. Yeah, I so, I mean. It feels like like there's a great game in here, like a great game in here yeah. somewhere, mm -hmm. but I it's agree. just too overwrought. Yeah, you could if you could simplify this down, simplify mm -hmm. a lot of the rules, make it a little clearer what's going on, yeah. a little clearer to read the I board. Mean, you might come yeah. up, shorten it, maybe shorten the rule, shorten I mean, the time a little bit. To me, a lot of people say like there's like a golden rule in my head, or uh -huh. not, maybe that's not the that's not the right word, but but it's it's sort of like. People will say, like, they'll find a game that they really love or mm -hmm. they think it's really great. Or, like, mm -hmm. people, and they'll, and uh, people say, well, that game's bad because of this. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, if you change these couple rules and house rule this, mm -hmm. then it can be a good game. And I just think to myself, there's thousands of games. Mm -hmm. Just don't pick one you have to redesign. <laughs> don't pick one just you have to pick. Just pick one that's uh, good, you know? Pick one that's already works. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, do you think, I mean, I think there will be people that will probably enjoy this, but I don't think it's for Jesse and I. I mean, yeah. I don't hate it, mm -hmm. but yeah, I it's agree. just. It, it, but you're gonna have to have some real <laughs> your tolerance yeah. for for rules and fiddliness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What I would think, you, what uh, would you rate it? How would you score it? All right. So again, just in summation, mm -hmm. the the great ideas, overwrought, mm -hmm. inelegant, looks great, great theme. I did feel like I had some some choices that were interesting. Mm -hmm. A lot of choices that were really just meaningless mm -hmm. to me, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like, I'll lower this fire, but mm -hmm. who, maybe that'll be good, maybe it <laughs> won't, <laughs> right? Uh, just kind of a little more luck than I like to see in a mm -hmm. game, a little more randomness. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. You got a number for me, Jesse? I'd give it a hard four again. And the four. only thing, yeah, wow. the only thing I would add to what you said was that in addition to all those strikes against it, for me, the strike of feeling like oppressed while you're playing mm. it, the fact of like, it's not like you're doing all these wonderful things and you have these great powers and it's hard and you lose, but it's the fact that you're like, I can't move. I'm fatigued. I'm fatigued. I have to spend my turn resting. That, that, that tires me out. That exhausts mm. me just playing it. So yeah. Well, yeah okay. Four, so, but... so, so I want to just mention uh -huh. not to loop back to the review, mm -hmm. but it's kind of weird too, because it's like, you know, if you want to move from this room to this room. It's no fatigue, mm -hmm. but if you're like, well, I want to, I want to lower the fire in this room before I leave, so you lower it, anti and then you just take one. So it's like that you've like done this good thing, lowered the fire mm -hmm. in your room, and now all of a sudden it's and, harder to move. And now you move in that room, and the one comes up, and it just completely yeah, invalid, it's validates so your turn anyway. It is a little weird. So it's a little frustrating. What would you rate it? I, you Do know, you first of higher? all, every time you say your number, I think that's since we started well. doing this, you say the number, and I go. Wow. wow, that's well. Whatever number you said. Which is really? odd because often I rate things high that you think yeah. I'm rating too high. I think I'm not just... much more different than I think I'm going to say a five. Uh -huh. Simply because I think that there is a game here. Mm -hmm. It does look, it's well produced and well mm -hmm. made, and it does have some very interesting ideas that I haven't seen elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So a five to me means it's it's like it's playable, but it's it's definitely a pass yeah. for me in most times. Uh, you most know time. what you made me think when you said that, though? Mm -hmm. Like Greg and I often talk about game design. Mm -hmm. We're we're interested a little bit in game yeah. design and mechanics, and I almost want to give this like a a seven rating for those interested in game design mechanics. Like mm. it's got some new interesting mm -hmm. stuff, and like if you wanted to know, like if you were a game designer, should you play this? Could you learn from it? You absolutely could. Mm -hmm. You could learn things that are bad, things that mm -hmm. aren't worth. How to simplify your rules? Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some clever ideas here. Yeah, you know what's so funny I, is I like, give this a seven for game designers to play. So what's interesting is like, if this were the game plus the expansion we just played, mm -hmm. I would tell people don't buy the expansion. 
I would say take out whatever the oh, extra whatever, stuff is. Whatever right. got added yeah. to the make deck it more like complicated. The, this was like a board game geek thing where uh -huh. it was like an extra $15 just uh -huh. for the deck hands or something. Mm -hmm. I said, just take it out, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's too, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just too many, uh, too many weird rules. All right, stop avoiding it. What? Oh, you gave it a rating. I did. I, I said a five. Yeah, so we, okay. yeah. So uh, what, what do you think? Like, do you think, I mean, there's a lot of pirate games. Yeah. So, I mean, thematically, there's probably a lot of links, but I uh -huh. think cooperatively what do you think uh oh look you're trying to box me into cooperative I, yeah, again totally box them okay in. well i've got games that aren't cooperative right, but i'm gonna yeah, i'm sure. gonna mention them okay i've the got one city. i've got mm -hmm. one yeah thematically merchants and marauders if you're interested in mm -hmm. being pirates and raiding and capturing stuff it's not cooperative but it's this big sprawling very cool game merchants and marauders that would be That's my pirate hugely recommendation hugely thematic it's a very Huge good sandbox that. game. Yes, that sandbox game, is, game. That's a good way to describe it. If you want to feel it. like exhaustion, that's a long, well, it's a big, game. Long, lot of, long game, a lot of, of downtime, but it also looks amazing. Looks, and yeah, it looks gorgeous. about as good as a board game can look. I think that's true. And it's sandbox is a good description of yeah. it. You feel like it's. But I don't. I don't see any Not similarities. Okay, mechanically. Well, what? Well, you got a, You got a game that you might well, recommend. Well, it's a weird similar? way of what you know. What this reminds me of What's like. That? Because I'm not as fond of this game, it reminds me of a game I really don't like. Okay. Uh, it reminds me of Elder Sign, and the reason is Elder Sign. Yeah, oh. I know that's so weird. There's lots of dice in Elder Sign. But it's but you're rolling them. This is not uh -huh. a you know. okay. But to me, like I feel like Elder Sign is a kind of game where you just you play and you just like it, you're sort of just at the whim of a lot of stuff so it's like you have to make the best choices you can mm -hmm. and then if like the stars align and i think it's really a lot of the arkham horror line for ffg is sort of like mm -hmm. you, it's just it's sort of forcing you to play the game over and over and over again until you just happen to do the best play but then also you get the right mm -hmm. conditions and i think that's i think because of the feel i get that's a bit of the chaos from this mm -hmm. but the theme and stuff it reminds me a bit of sort of the chaos of like uh where if you don't mind because i know the elder sign is quite popular i mean i neither of really yeah, do not neither like that us, game. neither of us like yeah, it I, I mean I'm, I'm trying to be nice here to say mm. i really don't like it that's <laughs> the best thing nice. i can say about it. but i mean i feel like it's not my game that's not my game that's yeah. not for me yeah but this isn't necessarily for me either but i feel like uh -huh. maybe the theme and the way that the game works and if people like that game maybe that's just like I don't like it, but those are, the, you know, maybe in that commonality, you know, mm -hmm. but I do, I did draw some parallels in my mind too. While you were talking, I thought of another game that you have played mm -hmm. and like that I don't know, but now that I think about it, there seems like there's some similarities. Mm, what, what about Escape the Temple? Totally different. Totally different. Totally. But there is laying out of tiles and having to move around and coordinate stuff. You don't have a choice in how you stuff. lay it out, though. It's very, very oh. different. Yeah. All right. Well, never mind. Then. Yeah, and that's also timed. You're going to hate that, too, by the way. We all, we were kind of discussing the idea of talking about... We always talk about movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, pirates is a is a mm -hmm. big theme. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of the pirates. I've only seen, a, like, one of them, or two of them, I think. Yeah. And they were not my idea. They were, like, a girlfriend or a friend's thing, you know. Mm -hmm. what, what uh, So... But Pirates of the Caribbean is kind of the definitive mm -hmm. pirate movies for this mm -hmm. last generation or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, are there any uh, any pirate movies that you like? I'm trying to remember if The Mist had a pirate ship or if it's just no. fog coming in. No. All I can I'll think of fog. is in... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. The Fog. The Fog, That's, okay. I'll go with The Fog. What was the... Um, what was the movie... What was the graphic novel that turned into a movie that was so great with Captain Manhattan or, or Mr. Manhattan and oh, Watchmen. Watchmen has a little sub story. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which is pirates which... that is so compelling. Mm -hmm. You're reading this graphic novel and then there's this little mm -hmm. sub story that one of the characters is, or yeah, one of the people is just reading book. a comic yeah. book. And it's, it wasn't in the Watchmen good. movie, but there is a separate movie which is all animated that is Really? That story, and I can't remember the name of the it's comic. It's a very compelling that, little yeah, inside story. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I remember when that came out. I don't know if they have a version that has that mm -hmm. cut into there, but that's pretty cool. I mean, it is. I think it linked up more in the comic. But that's a that's a whole co a complete uh, aside. But yeah, um, I think that's. Uh, oh, wait, we should mention too. I like this Dread Pirate Roberts since we're talking about pirates. The rule. The rule. If you uh -huh. die, you just become another pirate, and that's a link mm -hmm. to Princess Bride, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know. We didn't talk about, um, which we should probably just touch on briefly, there's there's a an expansion in this box where you can play with like, oh, I'm there's not... like an enemy, an actual person that you have to kill. There's like the so captain. some added complexity the skeleton, in the rules. The, like if this I isn't think the, enough for you. Yeah, there's like a ship's captain. I also want to mention though, we didn't really talk about the other power, 
character abilities. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are definitely, like, I mean, some of these are incredible. There's one guy that when you're looting, you don't take the fatigue that you normally do, and that's a ton. Mm -hmm. There's another guy that usually takes less fatigue, so he seems quite Well, quite it is good. a mark in favor of this game that you could say, okay, we're going to try a different strategy. Yeah. I'm going to take a different character, I think and we I have did. to play we, quite differently. This strategy seemed to be quite cool, but I think that, like, mm -hmm. we played these two, which were quite good, the, the looting yeah. and the firefighting guy. I mean, some of them are just plain awful to me, you know, like, I mean, but I don't know, like, uh, like, you know, I did see, feel like, hey, let's try this cool idea with these two. Mm -hmm. The first time it went pretty well because we were able to organize the deck in a way where we were able to take a greater advantage. This time, it just seemed like every time we drew cards, you know, it was just, it just... We were at the mercy. We were really at the mercy deck. of it this yeah. time. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I don't feel particularly compelled. I mean, in fact, when we played this the, the, the last time, I asked you, I said, would you want to, play? because we did affect this deck quite a lot mm -hmm. with the scrying character. The, yeah. the playthrough we filmed, we didn't, it didn't when really. When Greg says scry, just for those who don't know, oh, yeah. you get to take two cards, you pick the one, one you want, and, and then, the other and, one. Yeah. So it allows you a little bit of control over mm -hmm. what's happening. The playthrough we did, it didn't, it wasn't very effective. But when we had played it the time before, we sort of eliminated this aspect of the game or we, we were able to have exert control over what we were drawing in the order we were mm -hmm. drawing. So we were able to get really another choice, which added a little more complexity, mm -hmm. but it also allowed it us to... Mitigate some mitigate of the Mitigate some of the luck. luck. That's yeah. exactly the best way to say it. And I remember asking you, I said, Jesse, would you want to play this game ever again without just playing these uh -huh. two characters? And you said... I probably said no. You said no. And so we did play it again with these... And so we did. Games. And we <laughs> you asked me if I... Oh, right. We played it Yeah, but it's characters. interesting because certain games... Uh, that we've played in the past or that I remember playing. There's a game in particular that I do not like as well, so I don't want to be too negative. I'm not going to list it, but okay. but I remember there's an aspect, of the, the whole crux of the game, I remember a friend of mine was like, oh yeah, I like this game. And I'm like, because you were playing a character that eliminated the part of the game that makes the game bad. Uh -huh, yeah. you know. And so this allowed us to feel like we had some more control over the randomness mm -hmm. of the game, which is cool. This particular playthrough, the last one we did, was uh, not as affected, but um, I felt like yeah. it was a little more interesting. Now, I wonder if... But it if, does. Like, the other thing about that character does, it does also, it's another example of where like the game halts mm -hmm. and we have to figure out, well, if we do this card first, these things happen. It, do, it slows the game down. Now, taking a cue from some other games that we do enjoy, mm -hmm. um, some Sometimes they have like, like something where it's like you have this uh, situation what's coming up. where you have these cards and you have like uh -huh. these are the next coming cards. Yeah. If that were the case, uh -huh. without these symbols on the you bottom, could at least okay, do some you could say, look, the ones are going to come up. Mm -hmm. We got to run around. And maybe you might not be able to do anything about it, but you could say, well, look, I'm not going to bother to take my action mm -hmm. to reduce the two to That's a one. That's a great point. Because it's going to be a, a useless action. It would increase the bandwidth and overhead, but yeah. it's a great point in terms of like how would you fix the randomness, it feeling mm -hmm. like it's out of your control in the chaos. Yeah, that's not a bad way to mm -hmm. do it, to give you some picture of what's coming up. Then you could say, yeah. yeah, then you could say, well, let's do this and work towards it. Well, I feel like I've drank, playing this game makes me feel like I drank a, a flag and a uh, grog. Mm -hmm. grog. It feels like grog. I was out on the stretcher <laughs> on the, in the bottom of the boat being tortured. Yeah. So, uh, well... Any other? Would you like to add anything else, Jesse? No, Any more final thoughts? I think that does it. I hope we. Uh, I mean, I think we've. <laughs> we've, we've got definitely, our little list. Uh -huh. We've definitely. Um, well, as we say, we beat the horse, and then we beat it again, and we beat it again. Is and we threw it on a burning the, ship and let it explode. <laughs> is that the expression? <laughs> yeah, but so, uh, yeah. Thanks for joining us, thank and you. Uh, we'll yeah. see you next yeah. time. I feel a little bit bad. Why? That we trashed it? Yeah. I think the fact that you, 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 you bumped him up with his other games, Yeah. They not, he's not going to ever hear about us. No. No one will. <laughs> no one's watching it does give you a little like It's like it does give you a little pause, but I think it's important to be honest in the review. Yes, to keep people is. from, you know, I mean, you want to, you want to, and you know what, somebody's going to listen to this review and it's like, well, those guys are idiots. I like this. I think the game's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then they'll know. If we talk about a game, like, I think it's good to know what people like and what people don't like. We have to give our opinion. Yeah. Otherwise, what good are we? What what use are we? Mm. I, uh, I'm pretty good at giving my opinion. Mm-hmm.
Yes, you are. Wrap it up. It's already been wrapped up. 